uh, I understand that the bigger the dream, the bigger the resistance. And it's something that you need to know as well. Every new level is going to demand a new version of you. Who is coming and how did you go from being a, a Londoner to becoming a Spanish Red House? <laughs> well, have you guys heard about the book? Um, I think Susan Jeffrey, I, I never forget, I always forget the name, but it's called uh, Feel the Fear and Do It Anyways. Anyway, yeah. So I'm the kind of person that feels the fear every single day and I still do it. And that's really by God's grace. So uh, I just remember 10 years ago, I came to this beautiful country, Spain, and I thought, oh, wow, it made me feel so good. If I were to go again, and I feel the same way. I will spend a lot of time in Spain. So I just in that same hour. And that's the power of decision making. We spoke a lot about decisions today. So it's a power of decision making is cutting out all other options. Just make that decision and just go one step. And I felt the pull to go towards, um, to, to fly to Spain. I did not know what I would be having here. I wasn't going to come here for holidays. I just knew that Spain made me feel good. And I understand the importance of having a supportive environment. So you need to have a lot of self-awareness. I know myself. London is beautiful. London is my home forever but your girl is from Africa and I need the sun okay so <laughs> I need the sun on my skin every single day I need the beach I need to have this vibes and I just decided you know what why not have it why not have both I can live in London and in Spain so I just made that decision I did it scared I did, came here did not know anyone and within one year started a life um, created an, a retreat here brought in women from all around the world here and now God is just keep showing me things to do here and getting to know more people. So, yeah, I would say feel the fear and do it anyways. <laughs> so if you need to write that book, write that book. So, guys, feel the fear and do it anyway, a book by Susan Jeffries, I think, right? Yes. Feel the fear and do it anyway. Right. Actually, you've, you've just touched on one or two things. Um that I think is absolutely important. So you've just talked about environment. So you were very mm -hmm. keenly aware of the environment you want to be in, the environment um, that the environment that would make you fly. And mm -hmm. the second thing I've heard you just talk about is you refuse to restrict yourself. And that's 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 something I'm working with a few of my clients at the moment. And I told them last week, I said, listen, restriction is not from God. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the restriction, our God is a God of abundance. Restriction is not part of it. So that thing that makes us feel restricted, oh, yeah. I want to buy this and I feel restricted. I want to do this and I feel restricted. In my understanding and in my awareness, does not sound like God. Um, he would rather, if, and he talks about it, he would rather even make a mistake and then he corrects me, <laughs> right? Than for me to restrict myself. And that's kind of what I've just heard from you. You knew you wanted the sun. You knew you wanted the beach. Um, you, didn't, you didn't make your decision based on your current circumstance and condition. You went for it. So what can you tell people who are restricted right now in a job, in a relationship, in 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 a situation ship in whatever and finding it difficult to actually let go and go be where they know a lot of people know where they should be but they're not able to take that step like you and actually opt and go yes um so i because i did a lot of self-development and i'm now obviously a newborn christian so the bible is the best self-development you can ever do uh, I understand that the bigger the dream, the bigger the resistance. And it's something that you need to know as well. The dream, the bigger let's, the let's resistance. Slow, let's slow that down. I don't want, I don't want that yeah. to just fade. I don't want mm -hmm. that to fade. What you just said is really apt. The bigger the dream, the bigger the resistance. Can someone just write that? The bigger the dream, the bigger the resistance. All right, go on. Yes. So also the second thing is one of my favorite quotes is from Robin Sharma. It says, all change is hard at first. It's messy in the middle and it's gorgeous at the end. If I were to tattoo anything on my body and I would never get a tattoo, 
maybe a cross one day, but it would be this quote. All change is hard at first, it's messy in the middle, and it's gorgeous at the end. So when you are aware of this, you need to ask yourself the question, which, which part of the process are you currently in? Are you in the hard or messy part, or are you in the gorgeous part at the end? If you're at the end, you need to set a bigger goal because every new goal is going to give you resistance you may feel a little excited at the beginning but as soon as you step out you need to lean in instead of avoiding this resistance you need to lean in another super tool that i have utilized is from mel robbins it is the five second rule okay yeah. and that's why yeah. at least at 21 days to get momentum so the five second rule is from mel robbins you can go watch her ted talk or buy her book and it's literally yeah. says Five, four, three, two, one. Three, Count two, one, go. Yeah. Yes. So you go. If you have resistance, for example, it's the small things, not even the big goals. Let's say, for example, you want to wake up early in the morning. It's those small habits that you need to tweak. Once you get this confidence, and you, when you say to yourself, you know, I'm gonna do this, and you're doing it, that's building your confidence. Every time you say to yourself, I'm, I'm gonna do something, and you don't do it. You get out of the, uh, your alignment, out of your integrity, and that decreases your confidence. So all you need right now is really just having this awareness of this, knowing that resistance will show up every time you set an exciting and you know a goal, especially when it's a God's goal. Oh my God, when it's God's plan, it's scary. It's like literally blindfold on, and all you need is just God is telling you go more, one more step, go one more step, and just trusting Him completely. So when you're feeling that resistance, remember, I, I always knew it is, you know, all change is hard at first, it's messy in the middle, it's gorgeous at the end. So be prepared to go through the hard part, be prepared to go through the messy part because you asked for it and God won't give you a desire in your heart if he doesn't gonna, if he's not gonna bring it into completion. So it's not having the confidence in yourself, okay? It's a lot of people say, I'm confident in myself, I'm confident in myself, no. Don't be confident in yourself because yourself can lie to you. <laughs> so myself is scared. Myself doesn't want to do it. Myself is actually resisting it. So what can I have confidence in? I will have confidence in God who gives me the strength. And through his grace, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And mm -hmm. that's it. Yeah. So that place of dependence, that place of dependence on God, very key. So there's, there's something else you were talking about earlier. And I, and I know you you're, um, you you used to work with um, success resources and and T Hav Eka um, um, has this concept of your life you can you can have both so mm -hmm. it's it's not an either or universe it's you can you can enjoy your life you can be wealthy and be rich you can I mean you can be wealthy and have good health you can. Yeah. You can, you, no one said that the only place to make money is in London. <laughs> you, you, are, you, are in, you are in Europe, you're in Spain, you are in the best weather you want to be, and you're still being a, an influence and being a blessing around the world. So I want you to talk a bit into that because a lot of times, especially as Christians, we get very conflicted. Um, yeah. So because I'm a Christian, I can't be this way. Because I'm a Christian, I can't look beautiful because i'm a christian i should not um it's this is this wrong concept of humility that makes yeah. us feel that we have to reduce ourselves yeah instead of showing the lights that we truly are uh, you said it exactly like it is you know i don't know what bible verse it is but it says that you can't put the lamp underneath the table oh, sure. it has to be on top for it to shine so please go research that scripture but it's so powerful because you know um who first of all who says this a religion i don't follow religion i follow relationship with jesus i strongly recommend everybody to have a personal don't follow religion follow a personal relationship with jesus and um it is just completely freeing yourself from the shame and guilt because god already paid the price for this you don't have to ha have any shame and guilt anymore it's uh, your time of freedom. But here's the, here's the part where we need to be careful about. It's more, you know, when we are going to these courses and these events, it's not growing that desire just to make money for ourselves. We need to understand that this is to further the kingdom. This is, you know, we are, first of all, worthy to have this. It's accepting, saying, you know what, I'm worthy. And focusing more, I want to, you know, I want to give your audience a little bit shift in perspective, okay? I want you to shift from just focusing on, 
I want the money, I want to business, I want this to actually, okay, what did God give me that I can enlarge? So right now you need to get some skills, okay? No matter how, like if you really want to have this money, you need to learn sales skills, you need to learn marketing skills, you need to learn business skills. And you know, all of us where God designed us to grow, God designed us to to learn, to enlarge. So you have to start focusing more on you know learning those skills so you can reach more people. And as a result of you reaching more people, you are making money. So it's becoming a valuable person. Shift your focus from just want to make money, just ma making money to actually, you know, do the work to have the skill set so you can become of value in the marketplace. You have something of value to share with the marketplace and you want to, you know, Jesus himself, he left his town. He went to all corners of the world to, you know, to speak and to, to share the gospel and his um his followers share the gospel all around the world so it's our duty to create influence and impact that is the first mission create influence impact with what you have and the income will come create influence and impact the only way you can do influence and impact is by mastering the art of sales mastering the art of how to attract ideal clients mastering marketing and if you don't master this find somebody who does this for you because you're not, never going to make, make money if you just sit at home and just nobody knows about you. And I think that's the thing that's helped me a lot is, you know, God was just like, get out there, <laughs> you know, be bold, <laughs> speak about what you do. <laughs> so That's good. Yeah. That's good. I mean, just hearing that um, leads me to seeing in a, in, a, in a world that we live in where people are used to working um, for cut salary bands or mm -hmm. on a day rate and industry ceilings and someone like you then comes along and say hey you can actually double your earnings see i've done it um, um I, I want you to speak into that because that's that's something that's that's been my that's one of my take actions i've been talking about it in the last few weeks um i just came into this aha three weeks ago and i challenged my coaching clients that over the next one year i'm going to I'm, i want to push us to all make our annual incomes uh, our monthly income, and and I'm going to work with them over the next one year to begin to get into that mindset. Yeah. And so, Love and it. so hearing yeah. that from you, um, I want you to. That's somebody who's done it. You know, you've doubled your salary. So I want someone like you to share, so that if anyone is watching, they can see that it's actually possible for them because you have done it, right? So just share that with us. Well, the first thing that I did, uh, one word actually comes to my mind. It is the word of stewardship, okay? It doesn't matter how much money you have right now on, in your bank. It, it really doesn't matter if you have $1, one pound, or a million. It does not matter. What matters is can you steward what you already have? There's this parable in the Bible, again, about um, where, I don't know, they've been given three people have been given um, one has one has been given five of the talent. coins. Yeah. The other one has been given. Can you tell it? Can you tell it? I think you can tell it better than me. Somebody has no, given the has been given the uh, ten the coins. Yeah. And the other yes. So you know, it's about really taking what you have, and already God is planting inside of us that we have to have a you know a multi a multiplication mindset like everything that we do it should be multiplied there's like it's all seeds and we are the ones that are multiplying it's like i heard tj jakes once said that you know god never created a chair he never created a table god created yeah. a tree we yeah. are the ones that made it a chair and made it a table so the same thing with you right now no matter what you have what can you take what you already have and multiply it because what a lot of people do they focus on what they don't have and that is right. keeping them away to god's blessings so start really with what you have do what you do what you can with what you have and do the best that you can with what you have with a heart of gratitude and if what you have in your mind is very small you take that little that god has given you and he's gonna bless you with multiplication if you have a heart of gratitude so i want to share a personal story because it's very yeah, close to me like i have so many stories of, around this where I really saw this miracle. First of all, is tithing. Okay, my parents taught me at a very young age to tithe, no matter if I had very little money or a lot of money. 
So it's giving 10%. Everything that, everything that you want. If you want more love, give love. If you want more money, give money. <laughs> if you want, you know, anything in life, if you want, give it first. So it's the, it's the power of tithing. I don't have much time to speak about it, but really research it. Uh, ask God, speak to God about it, and become disciplined around it. The second thing, my story was, one of the stories that I remember now is, there was a time when I was building my business very new and I, had, I hustled so many part-time jobs in London. I wasn't ashamed of having jobs. I didn't care if I was going to sweep the floor. I, w I just wanted to get my business started. So I would do whatever it takes. But there was one period of my time where when I started my business, I got completely broke. And I remember I was working in this place in Covent Garden and I couldn't afford to pay the bus. I didn't have transport. I was so ashamed to even call my parents to ask them for money for transport. So I just kept hidden. I was just like, okay, God, you know, you're going to bring me through the season and I'm going to give you glory until the end of my life. So what happened is I was walking. It was in the summer. I was walking from my home to, to Covent Garden, which was like one and a half hour walk in the sun. And during that time, I didn't have any money in my pocket, but I was grateful that I had legs. I was grateful that I was healthy. And I went to this job with a great attitude. And I, I remember the next, the month after I was, I was gonna organize my very first workshop. I had no money for this workshop. I needed to book a venue. I had, this is my first event I've ever created. And what happened is um, I got an, uh, an, a letter through my, through my kitchen. I got a letter in my house from HMR, <laughs> HMRC, and it was a yeah. brown letter. I'm like, oh, my God, this is bad news. I knew that at the time I needed 300 pounds to pay deposit for the, for the venue, and I had no money. So uh, I got 303 pounds from HMRCs or something that is like very old. <laughs> and I'm like, this is God. And, and then what I did is I went to the venue to pay the deposit and they looked at me and they said, no, we want to sponsor you. So I got to keep that money. They said, we see you here all the time. We love your attitude. We want to support your business. We're going to sponsor you. They sponsored a luxurious venue in London, including food. I got everything for free. So all the money that came in from my clients helped me to reinvest it into my next event, which actually built my whole business. So this only came, I can track back because I was grateful when I had nothing. I was grateful with the little that I had. I couldn't even, I was walking. I was grateful that I had legs and God blessed me. So it's having that heart of gratitude. Do the best that you can. If you have a job right now, never be ashamed to have a job. Be grateful for that job that you have right now and trust in God that he's going to elevate you to something better. So yeah, that's just the one of the many stories that I can tell for myself and my clients. Good stuff. Good stuff. So um, you were sharing earlier, so you were born in Sudan, lived in Germany, um, which is a country known for their efficiency, lived in London, one of the most expensive cities in the world. And now you live in beautifully laid back Spain. What have you seen yeah. in, <laughs> very laid back there, um, what mm -hmm. have you seen as a common feature um, with rich and poor people around the world based on your experience? You know what's so interesting? When I was living in London, bustling and hustling and working my buns off, I wasn't making much money. <laughs> and then since I came to Spain, the more relaxed I am, the more fun I have, the more joy I have, the more money I make. I had one of the best business years last year and I was the most relaxed. I had the best time and I didn't feel like I was even working. So Whoa. again, it goes back to that. choose your environment, trusting, you know, doing, yes, doing the work. I'm not saying just sit there and relax, but just, you know, make sure that your state is right. That you're, if you're currently in an environment where there's tension all the time, you have to choose your people wisely. If you have current, currently toxic people around you, you know, it's just finding ways not to just completely eliminating them. They will fade away, but bring in more, add more people into your community that are on that level to help you level up, to speak life yep. into you. And I believe that's the thing that I did. And my, the physical environment, you know what, what we wear matters what yep. we have around in our physical 
face matters. So if you have clutter around you, guess what? This clutter will show up everywhere. So right now you need to do a detox. You need to clean up. You need to let go and of everything that is not in alignment. So if you're looking to get a new wardrobe, okay, get the old stuff out because God's gone, won't going to bless you with something new until you let go of what is not in your plan, in your path. And that's with everything. So get let go of the clutter, the physical space, the mental clutter, and start unlearning some of the things that you know. And, you know, there's so much teachings out there, but I would always say back to basics. Simplicity, okay, keep it simple. One step at a time. Work with what you have. Start today. And don't, you know, invite God into this because you need his strength. You're going to feel the resistance every single day. So, yeah, I'm, I'm literally here right now living my best life. And I'm giving God th thanks to God every single day. And I want everybody to experience this. I'm not a multimillionaire yet. I have been around multimillionaires and I have wealthy friends. And I think it's it doesn't it's not about the number. It's not about being a multimillionaire, a billionaire. It's not even success is not determined on this. It is determined of, you know, what is your definition of success? Like for me, I, I know I don't need a mansion. I've been in mansions, I've hired mansions, but I don't need to have a mansion. I'm very happy in a beautiful uh suite <laughs> and you know, like I'm very simple. And, you know, beach views. So I know what I want. I'm self-aware. So maybe you don't know what you want yet. And one thing I would encourage you is go out, expose yourself to things that you don't know yet. Expose yourself to people that can, you know, that can enlarge in your vision. Go visit places. Go see the things that you're asking for and feel does that feel good to you? You know, and you have a choice to make. Not not because you see a highlight reel or Instagram highlight of another person. You say, "I want this." To go, actually ask God and ask yourself, "Is this really for me?" So that's what I did. I just became, you know, I stopped comparing myself with everybody. I just became very aware of what my path is. I became just, I stay in my lane. I don't look left and right. I celebrate other success, no jealousy. Mm -hmm. I celebrate everybody and I know I have my race to run. And it's, it's the more we can help people together, the better. And that's really the focus. That's good stuff. So one of the things, and I'll go back to my question. One of the things I've had you just say, and you said at the top again, is you really do believe that your environment has definitely contributed to the growth that you have seen. And we absolutely need to be very intentional about our environment, even as it, as it is with a location, as it is within our current space in our homes, you know? Um, so it's, a, it's, a, it's leaving that life, being intentional, with what your environment looks like, what you wear, what you keep, what what gives you joy, and making sure you're keeping all that. Being yeah. being very centered, right? And being really yeah. centered to what what your true self, and not staying in the fake in any way or form. So, That's right. back, what yes. I what I wanted to find out with your experience around the world. Um, mm -hmm. What is a common feature? And you have said it, how you, you live with, you've, you've, you've hung around millionaires. What were some of those common features you've seen or habits you've noticed with wealthy people? And what are some of those habits mm -hmm. you've noticed around people who are broke or poor? In the, it could be in their mindsets or habits that, so somebody who needs to cross over to this side, they need to develop either this mindset or these habits. Um, and and this is definitely as an experience over the over and seeing it in different worlds. I I think poor people are the same in you know, everywhere I've gone to. I mean, beautiful South Africa, you see yeah. poverty um, all over the world. In America, you go to some places, you think you're 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 in Africa somewhere, you know, and it's still the same mindset with poor people. So, what what are those mindsets and habits that you see that wealthy people? You can almost guarantee this is how a wealthy person is going to think. And this is how poor people think. Yes, that's right. So uh, I mentioned earlier that, you know, small minds, they talk about people. Mm. And average minds, they talk about events. And great minds talk about goals and visions and the future and plannings. So it's really changing your conversation. One of the things that I noticed about the difference between poor and rich is, 
is that poor people like to engage in consumption. It's a lot about consuming, you know, consuming media, consuming things. It's because that's what they expose themselves to. And then the wealthy people, it's just my personal observation, the wealthy people, they're, they're more concerned about investing was looking for a return on investment so how they invest their money all of us have got the same amount of time in a day and it's how we use this time Oprah Winfrey has got 24 hours you know any person that you're admiring we all have the same amount of time every single day and it's like are you becoming a consumer or are you becoming an investor so I you know if you're smart you want to become an investor you want to ask every time you are about to invest your time in th something people think money is the best uh, it's the biggest asset but actually it is time time is your greatest asset because you can always make money but you can never make time back and what I noticed with wealthy people is that they invest in things that give them more time for example if it's like cleaning they would not do cleaning they would hire somebody that does cleaning for them because their time is more important in that period of time they can make more money so it's becoming more a shift in mindset of instead of becoming a consumer becoming an investor of things and how do you invest your time it's starting how do you start your day it literally goes into the small habits every single day how you start your day how you finish your day the first hour in the morning are you consuming straight away social media or are you investing the first hour in the morning with god with uh, with physical activities with just getting your spirit getting your goals writing your goals down for the day and giving gratitude how are you going to bed are you consuming netflix or before going to bed or are you intentional about just you know like making sure that you're having a good night's sleep so winding down giving gratitude again spending time with loved ones so it's really about how do you invest your time will initially uh, you know what i saw most what my wealthy friends do and um yeah and i believe everybody can do this it's just about conditioning i don't never say i never say you know oh poor people do this oh you know i think it's all about how we've been brought up if nobody has taught you this before if you haven't been exposed to this if this is how your family brought you then right now if you're listening to this there's no coincidence this wake up call to say there's something else is more for you there's a better way to invest your time so you can reach your goal and another thing i want to add it just came to my mind and I, I don't know why but i think it's so important Go on. we always chase goals right we always we think when we achieve this we will be happy wealthy people understand it's not about the goal it's about the mm -hmm. process so come on to fall in love the journey, not the goal, because that's where the juice is at. And I believe a lot of people are conditioned to, you know, have this shiny object syndrome where you just focus on the goal and you're not focused on the journey. And it's the journey that is going to give you the ultimate fulfillment, because in that journey, you're going to start to appreciate this is character building challenges that build your character to become who you are. And you start to appreciate yourself more. You start to become more confident. And that is really what is actually giving you the joy and happiness, not the end goal. So. That's amazing. I tell I tell my clients that the purpose of the goal is never the results. It's never you are not the results. It's it's about who you're becoming in the process. Because what what then happens is when you hit the goal, so what next? But when you're changing in the process, you find out it's not just about you. It's also about other people. So the goal trying to reach that goal and working and shedding all that weight now begins to introduce you to greater goals, greater, greater purpose and, and things like that. So it's just, it's just good to hear. Yeah. One of my clients just say, this is what coach says all the time. It's what it is. I'm glad you're hearing it now from <laughs> hearing it from Kameen. Um, um, you shared your experience of family life when you were young, um, had working parents, um, who unfortunately you never got to have much quality time sitting um, to eat and enjoy each other like you said. You said, how did that? What did that do for you? How did that shape your thinking? Did that? What? 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 What have been your learnings from that for you to have just said that? Yeah. So I, I asked the question earlier. Why do you do what you do? It usually comes from a pain point. So the reason why I wanted to create a freedom 
business, a freedom lifestyle where I can do what I want, when I want, with whom I want, <laughs> whenever I want, is because it came from that place where I saw my parents working so hard and, you know, we're not even able to spend quality time together. And I promised myself if I ever created, if God is going to bless me with my family, I'm going to make sure that I'm going to give my children and my husband the time, the quality time and not put my work as priority. And, you know, I will have enough, like that just that more than enough. There is, I don't have to work so hard because I know my business is flourishing and I know I have several income streams, which is also a habit that um, wealthy people have. They don't, they don't just have one income stream, they have several income streams. And I just know I have this financial certainty because I have worked for it, I know it's there. So it is, um, yeah, it's, it's really a pain point that started it. And that's now, that's my drive. That's my juice of why I do what I do. So yeah, I would as, as well ask all of you, you know, what is, what has been your pain point? Why do you do what you do? Why is it important for you to make money? Um, there's always a reason and dig into that reason because that is really one of the greatest blessings. And that's, that is going to be your fuel. So I, I want you to talk about this process of auditing and how do we audit and recognize who or what we need to drop? I believe, I say, I say this also in a different way, you have to give something up to go up. People are constantly adding stuff without actually asking what needs to drop? What should I stop doing? But we're constantly adding stuff. If I'm going to build my coaching business, there are some things I'm going to drop, and most of them I'm dropping them this weekend already. You know, if you're going to go to another level, something needs to something needs to drop. So talk to us about auditing. Give people clarity around how they need to start choosing. What do you add? What do you reduce? What do you stop doing? Yeah, so um, I think, we, yeah, we mentioned this as well earlier this morning. When you are invested, when people invest, they are invested. So mm. you want to make sure, I, I knew that I'm an invested person. That's why I... I tr like to believe and I see it as a result. I, I have invested people. I work with my ideal clients and they are fully in because they invested uncomfortable money and that's why they get the results and beyond this results. And I just know, you know, for me, I made a decision. I'm a leader. I acknowledge myself that I am a leader. A leader is somebody that takes full responsibility. I don't justify, I don't blame, I don't finger point. I take full responsibility. As a result, I attract leaders. So you have to first become this person for you to bring in those people around you. <laughs> so become everything that you're asking for. So I ask for my clients to take full responsibility. I tell them, look, you may get results. You may not get results. It's 100% right. on you. And it's just being very honest up front and giving them the, you know, like, for example, you can hire the best personal trainer, you know, to drop weight or to get fit, to get those apps. But you, at the end of the day, you have to work out. You have to do the crunches. You have to do the squats. You're the one that's got to sweat, not the personal trainer. So it is, you know, looking for people to when you work with. So for me, I had to let go of people who were under, not valuing me, who were just taking my time for granted. And I just had to say, hey, look, I trust that you got value from this. I started the YouTube channel. I said, hey, look, I know um you know my time currently is very valuable to me but i would still like to support you and i send them my free youtube videos that they can watch for free but i won't give them my time anymore so wow you no know, it's just like finding ways in a graceful way to release people and always like just doing it in a graceful way and you know, a lot of times people also fade away have you ever experienced this where you want when you're when you set yourself into that energy i'm gonna go there no matter what when you make that decision you will see people dropping and fading away that's a good thing like when you have yep. a goal when you god is calling you someone some suddenly a breakup happens suddenly somebody says i, I don't want to be friends with you anymore that happens yep. for a reason because god is already working you're not work you're not letting them go by your own so sometimes we don't have to do it with our own strengths we don't have to fight for this to let go we can ask actually god to remove those things from our lives and we really have to look at it at the whole perspective okay it's what are you need what do you need to let go in your habits what do you need to let go in your mindset that is not supporting you what do you need to let go in your environment physical environment what do you need to let go what kind of people are toxic 
right now in your environment. Start auditing this. And then when you let go, go through it in a graceful way, not with anger. Go do it through a forgiveness bridge. Like just saying, you know what? Thank you for this. You helped me at the time that I needed you, but now I release you. In the name of Jesus, I release you. I let <laughs> you go. <laughs> you know, I, I God bless you, but now God bring me the people that you have assigned for me. God bring me the people that are valuing me, that are, you know, right now, oh my God, I'm experiencing the greatest blessing. It is, you know, I have clients, they they paid already in full. And some of my membership, it's, it's a high-end ticket. So um, they already paid in full. And some of my clients suddenly send me 100 pounds, 200 pounds on PayPal. And I, I messaged them. I said, hey, you already paid in full. And they say to me, oh, you, you um, blessed me so much. I want to I wanna keep sowing into you. And I'm like, wow, that's the kind of people that you want to work with. And I remember I, I asked for this. I used to work yeah. for so little, give so much of myself, be completely exhausted to people who didn't appreciate me. And now I have people who pay me more than what, they, what I actually offer out there. So it is really being radical and removing those things and welcoming the new and really like become this person own it and receive god's grace because you can stand in his promise and that's that's going to give you the confidence that's good stuff let me take some of the questions from people before i continue so how did you go about networking or ac assessing networking with people that were not already in your circle because these days it seems to be hard to get access to people that are already where you are trying to get to Yes. Networking is a funny thing. I don't think networking is for everybody. <laughs> so, <laughs> I actually consider myself, believe it or not, an introvert. Okay. Mm. And it's really funny. I don't like going to networking events, but I do know that I want to connect with great minds. So it is, first of all, you know, it's instead of going to that person and just asking what is in it for me, ask what can I provide value to that person? So being specific, who do I want to connect with? I, I tend to connect with leaders, with influencers, with people of high impact because I just, this is the kind of people that I like to learn from. So, and I attract those friends in my life. And this is, um, it's the only way, the only reason why I do this is because I, I intentionally, I say, this is the kind of people I want to connect with, but I also ask myself, what value can I bring to them? Exactly. So um, you have to ask, I can't answer this question for you, but you have to ask yourself, like, for example, if you want to connect with me, like, just like, okay, I'm giving you a free book. Like what, what value would you like, if you have a, if you want to do a coaching session with me, okay. And you don't have, maybe have the money. You can ask what value can I provide to Carmen? What can, you know, and just asking those questions and maybe just ask them directly, just share with them. Don't go straight away. What value can I share with you? Because you need to tell them what you offer. You need to tell them, look, this is what I do. I currently don't have this, but I, this is what I can do for you. Is that something that's going to be of help to you? And that's a better approach than just straight away going to networking, just like me, 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 this is my business card. This is what I do. Actually ask, be curious about people, ask questions. And the more interested you become, the more interesting you become. So that's really good. It's, it's actually interesting that you said um, uh, you don't find yourself. I've never been to networking events. Um, <laughs> yeah. and there's, just, there's just something about that whole networking thing that that begins to show that I've got a limiting belief in, <laughs> around it. Um, I'm not likely to go to a networking event, but people around you, around me, will tell you that. The, the 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 strength of what I do is actually in my network. And mm. and I'm increasingly finding out that I do have a very strong network. And when I look at it, it's just what you've just explained. I've I've been able to attract a strong network as a result of the value of what I've put out there. So I've not had to go looking for people. People have been attracted to me. And that's been as a result of what I've put out there. I've been very intentional in the types of people that I want around me. I've been very intentional in ensuring that I'm giving value in whatever I do, be it in music or in coaching, um, I serve, right? And and over the years, it's just meant that I've built a healthy network and you see your network is, network is in your network. So we've got another question here. I think you want to answer the latter part. They say, how do you especially, um, how do you do what you do, especially being a family person? I'm aware you're not a family person. So describe your typical day. 
So make us feel bad. I know you wake up every day running around doing the gym and you're going to gym twice a day. All right, so make us feel bad now. Let's go. I don't have a typical day. I really don't have a typical day. Uh, right now, my days are different before. Um, obviously, I did the work for a long time for me to be able to live the life that I live right now. I've been doing the work since five years, okay? So don't just like look at me here like, oh, she's just at the beach all day and just like traveling and no. I was doing the work so I can actually live this blessing right now. Uh, so my typical day, I don't have a typical day, but usually I wake up at 6.30 a.m. in the morning and I um, I give thanks to God. That's the first thing I give thanks to God. I read the Bible since I got baptized. One of my non-negotiables every day is reading the Bible. And that's since November. It's a new habit every day, no matter what. And then uh, I have my client call. So I have an accountability club where I have a half an hour call. That's my that's my working morning. So I have a half an hour accountability coaching call. I do some admin work. I tackle my to-do list. I have done my to-do list the day before. Um, and then I usually don't eat until lunchtime. I do this thing called intermittent fasting. So I like to have green juice. Sometimes I go to the beach. Sometimes my friends surprise me with a surprise trip, like on Tuesday. We went to this beautiful village. Um, and yeah, it's just every day it's different. <laughs> it's like, it's just, it's doing work. I get my work first thing done, done in the morning. So at the end of the day, I can have more peace of mind. And I, I realize if I don't get productive in the morning, I'm, you know, in the evening, I just push it away and I don't get it done. So one of the books that helped me was from Brian Tracy. It's called Eat That Frog. Do the hardest thing in the first, first thing in the morning. So sometimes I have so many things to do that I even get to wake up earlier than 6.30 a.m. So it's just really managing your day and and then enjoying. I bring a lot of joy into my day with the work. Ooh. Yeah, you're just a typical example of living that life by design and not default, which is, which is good to see someone actually doing that. I wanted to touch on something um, you said, and I'm just, just looking at this thought and, um, um what one of the things i know about growth is if you see someone who is consistently growing who is actually growing who's changing their mindset who's changing their spiritual awareness and all that what you'll find out is that people will naturally fade away you you'll find out that it, it starts getting a bit lonely the people people who don't like that you start making certain people uncomfortable so without even telling them you're changing people can see it and they will naturally start drifting away. So if you still fight, the challenge though is that a lot of people are trying to hold on to the old that is trying to leave them, right? It, mm -hmm. it goes back to the story of Abraham and Lot. If Abraham had tried to keep Lot, he would never have seen the fullness of what God was bringing to him. So we have to be typically very sensitive to know when God is allowing something go so that we yeah. can gravitate to where he's taking us to. Wow. Yeah, just wanted to um, um, help that. Uh, I think there was another question. How did you take your, how how long did it take you to build your business? Were there any setbacks? If so, how did you deal with setbacks? Knowing what I know today, it took me a long time. Knowing what I know today, it could have taken me much quicker. It took me five years because I didn't have I provide now the things that I wish I needed. I knew the things that I needed when I started my business that has that would have accelerated me at a much faster pace. It would be having the right community, having accountability. It doesn't matter if you're the most motivated person in the world, you need accountability, not just from a friend or just somebody. No, somebody that you invest money with because there must be skin in the game. So having yeah. accountability, having community, and having the right information, not just any information, because right mm -hmm. now you can go on, you can go and get overwhelmed with information. It's about filtering the right information. It's surrounding myself with the right people, listening to the right people, having those people as friends, building relationships, putting relationships as number one. So if I would have done all of this, I would have got there much quicker, but I needed to go through this process because that's exactly what I'm teaching today. That's exactly what I'm helping my clients. I'm, I'm providing this to the marketplace because that's what I needed. And I know so many people need this. So I, I just needed somebody to give me that push to, to see someone who's done it already, 
not just talking about who's done it already and I can follow their path. So that's that's why I can't tell you like the way it like if it took me five years, it's gonna take maybe it's gonna take you five months, maybe it's gonna take yeah. you eight months. So I can't tell you but my experience is gonna be your experience. What you need to focus on is having community accountability, mentorship, right information, and surrounding yourself in the right environment. And yeah, when you find this, you can go there much quicker than than doing it on your own. Could you, could you just list that again, just in case somebody missed it? Because I mean, that's something sure. I see all the time, but just list all that again, accountability, mentorship, uh, accountability. the right information, which is not, yeah, go. Yeah, so it's accountability community accountability is skin in the game okay one of the things that i do with my clients we have this 21 day momentum challenge and in 21 days literally they gain momentum we see amazing results what they what i do with them they have homework every day and the homework is super simple and super easy however if they miss a day they will have to pay at least 10 pounds to charity that's the kind of accountability that we have yeah i think i think so, i'm gonna start that i like that i like that <laughs> And, and, you I, see, and, I, and I have a charity business myself, so they'll pay really? my charity. Really? Awesome. <laughs> okay, that's perfect. What I found with my clients, you know, usually people start a course, but they don't finish. My mm -hmm. course always get complete. People always finish my courses. So <laughs> this is one of the reasons. So it's having accountability, having the right community. You know, um, I, I'm a big believer in group coaching. I do a lot of group coaching and it's powerful because sometimes you hear a story of another person and you relate yeah. to them. You know, having just people that you can relate to, to you, people that celebrate you, people that speak life into you when your family doesn't speak life to you. Um, and yeah, just a community and be accountable, be a leader, you know, take responsibility, stop justifying, stop blaming, stop finger pointing, just take full responsibility from today. So, yeah. Good stuff. Right. When did you leave, decide to leave your nine to five job? Someone is asking. When did I decide to leave? Well, <laughs> I think when was my last job? I always had like, when I was, um, when I was building my money, I started to have like this little small jobs just to sustain myself. That's why I say if you're currently, I, like if you're in this transition phase, it's okay to have like little side jobs that's going to help you and support you. So I did a lot of sales jobs. I think the last job that I had was as an events, no, not events manager. I was a business development manager for this events company, um, 2017. Yes. <laughs> And yeah, that was 2017 and I lasted only three months because I'm an entrepreneur. I can't last long in a job. So yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> right. Um, talk to us about what one of the concepts that's kind of missing a lot in, in the days we live in is I mean, you've mentioned one of them, community. That's something I'm mm -hmm. I'm I'm big on. I'm building a community. I call it hundred hundred strong. And yeah. I'm, I'm very intentional about who's in my community and the kind of people who are in that community and completely sewing into them. I mean, I have a coaching session every Saturday with all my clients and, and that's given into them in a group coaching format, I call it masterminds. Um, and one of, one of the things, one of the areas I'm, 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 I'm growing in and also pushing my clients is this concept of partnership. Um, mm -hmm. Um, so I, I want you to talk to me about partnering up. So my concept of partnership is when you partner, you partner with people who don't have what you have. So it's it's um, it's about the so that's my concept. So I just wanted what what has been your experience around partnership and what can you add to that conversation? Okay, if you ever do business with friends, always not friends or no friends, always, always, always have a contract always have things on black and white no matter if you're best friends if it's family especially if you're best friends and your family you know i've seen and i've personally experienced families being destroyed friendships being destroyed because they started doing business together and they didn't have things in black and white white so uh having just clear communication okay i had a personal experience where i organized events and i um, you know, instinctively, I knew I shouldn't have partnered up with these people, but I did partner up because it was like shiny from the outside. It sounded good, but my my the Holy Spirit spoke in my side of me, and I didn't. I chose not to listen to it. 
so I paid the price for it. It was very exhausting. And um, yeah, I learned my lesson from this. So it's looking out for partners who are narcissistic. There's narcissistic characters. Uh, go look it up if you don't know what it is. Um, you know, it's looking for, look for partners that you have trust with. Look for partners that test them, okay? Have a clear communication always. Communication is number one. Um, yeah, that, that's just like from my own experience. So if you ever do business with friends and family, always have a contract, always have, don't never assume anything. Okay. Always Whoa. talk and that will help you immensely. And if, if your gut instinct says something is wrong, it's probably is wrong. So question that and yeah, be mindful of who you pay. Either elevate you or bring you down literally. <laughs> so. Right. So I, I know, I know the answer to this one, um, but this is, this is one of my, um, um, highest paid clients and important clients. So I'm asking this on behalf of my clients. Um, sure. the, 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 the question is, are you single? Ah, this is funny. <laughs> <laughs> Can you see a ring on it? No. <laughs> so. All right. Okay. Clients, I hope you're watching. Um, <laughs> She's she's not single, and I, I I actually just launched a matchmaking business today. Um, so, um, so <laughs> that would that would benefit for us. But on a serious note, with the knowledge and achievements um, um, that you have experienced, how not and with your awareness right now, and this is I want to talk to single people. I want to help people who are not in a relationship. So you've grown your awareness, you've grown your knowledge, you've grown your experience. You're your own woman. Um, you have your own money. Um, with this knowledge and achievements, mm. how do you think this would impact you choosing a partner or being chosen by a partner, whichever way? Well, I love partnership. I love marriages. And I think marriage is an institution. Like, it's not an institution. It's, a, it's something, it's a gift from God. So, um, you know, as a woman, I want to speak to women because I don't know how it is for men. But as a mm. woman, you know, for me personally, I am happy in my single season and I know when God has brought me my kingdom man, because I'm a kingdom woman, you know, then I will be happy in my marriage. I will be, so it's, it's being happy in all your seasons and mm -hmm. it's being patient in all your seasons. And, you know, if you can't be happy single, you won't be happy married. So I haven't been married yet, but I know if I would, I would be enjoying it because I'm enjoying my singlehood and I know, um, you know, I know the, the task of a woman as a married, as a wife. So it's like educating yourself what a wife is, what a husband is, what's the purpose. Uh, we get this whole love thing very much twisted. <laughs> so, you know, people think love is like, just like Titanic, you know, no, it's like all lovey-dovey and it's about feeling. No, if we look at love, you know, in the Bible, it's love is patient, love is kind, love doesn't boast. So it doesn't matter how much money I make, I will never be in competition with my husband. So it's more, you know, I it's like submission. It's it's educating, it's more going into that route. So if you're a woman of power and you think you're intimidating other men, then you know, release that way of thinking because your kingdom man will never be intimidated by you. He will celebrate you, he wants to elevate you, and the same you are elevating him. So that's my advice. And it's so funny, even though I'm single, I have counseled so many relationships. And I even last year, one of my friends, she was single and I coached her now, now she's getting married. So, um, and even like, I don't know, but I was always interested in the subject of relationship. If you need any coach in your matching business, I'm, I'm happy to help. <laughs> Definitely, I'm, I'm, good, I'm good for us to back with that. <laughs> um, there was um, just something you something you just touched on, which I think is a valid lesson, and I don't want us to miss it because a lot of people miss that. You just talked about your spending time, you've spent time understanding and learning the role of a wife, the role of a husband. So that's you investing in the knowledge. So a lot of people yeah. get it the other way around. They think, hey, we get married. Then we'll go and start learning about marriage. We get married, we'll go and learn the role of a wife. You know, so I want you, people didn't get that, but I heard it because and that's what I've been telling people is how invested are you even in the journey that you want to go to? So, so many people are spending time in their singlehood waiting to get married instead of actually investing in the knowledge that would prepare them for that journey. So talk to us about that and, and what your 
what you're learning and and how intentional people should be in that journey yeah. i i'm a strong believer in starting before you're ready and i think oprah winfrey said it uh, luck is when preparation meets opportunity so i want to be always the person that is prepared before the thing comes because the least thing nobody wants to get married to get a divorce nobody wants mm. to make money lose money so you want to be the person that learns how to keep the marriage not just get the marriage you want to be the person that learns how to grow the money instead of just losing the money or just making money so it's having that shift in mindset shift in perspective of becoming a steward of things becoming a multiplier of things and you know seeing yourself as somebody that's you know people say it's just a honeymoon phase or you're just seven years but i don't believe that i believe you you can be in love with someone forever and your love grows there's so many levels to love and relationship and when you start having that mindset, that multiplier mindset, you're, you know, you it's it's you you need preparation. Every new level is gonna demand a new version of you. Something has to go for something new to come in. Something old has to go. So your old self has to die for the new to be reborn. So maybe there's ways of your singlehood right now that's keeping you stuck. And uh, even though I am single, I'm attracting men around me all the time. And it's just like but I know I can listen to God's voice if that's the one for me or not. And, you know, it's being having that discernment, having that wisdom and asking God for that discernment in your decision making every single day. It is money mindset yeah. week. So let's go back. <laughs> let's go back to money. So how important <laughs> is it for us <laughs> to be in proximity of wealth in order to absorb um the, the, the ways of wealthy people. And I mean, let's start with that. And can you advise actually um, average people watching how they can break down mm -hmm. that class gap to be around wealthy people? How can they be intentional about actually go hanging around wealthy people that helps begin to change their mindset? Mm -hmm. So um, you're like, for me at the very beginning, it was uh, an uncomfortable thing because I, I came from this minimum wage mentality and suddenly I was in a boardroom of millionaires and I was signing contracts like with Donald Trump stuff and like crazy, crazy, like big things. I was so intimidated. So I understand that for you, if you haven't been exposed to wealth, it can feel very intimidating. And I want you to know that this is normal. This is part of your process. So I would say go to those environments, go to check out in your city in a five-star luxury, dress up, just sit in those places and get comfortable in those places. And you know, start talking to people, start, start conversations, even though you will feel uncomfortable all the time, but you need to break through that barrier. So, and then now, okay, we're in this global pandemic right now. If you can't leave your house <laughs> and social distancing, you can do this online. We have one of the most powerful tools right now that you can utilize and connect with people on Instagram and, you know, just get closer. Start start always with what can I, what can I provide for them? What value Ooh. can I add to them? People. instead of always what can I take from them what value can I add to them and then from that place you can approach everybody cool that's a great great lesson there okay so let's um um what would you say will be the top five things and I've kind of had a, a few of them the top five things you would tell a younger come in oh my goodness five that's so many Okay, the number one is uh, make make your relationship with God a priority. Number one, put God first in everything. I do not ever want to go one day in without God. I don't think I can do anything in my business, in my health, in my relationship without Him. So put Him first in everything. Acknowledge Him first in everything. Give glory to Him in everything. Because God is the way maker, the miracle worker, the provider, the healer. So I've got everything from that source. Uh, my confidence, knowing my identity, not allowing people to tell me who I am, but allowing God to tell me who I am, which is I'm wonderfully and beautifully made in the image of God. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. That's my confidence. Um, to The third thing is choose, filter the information that you're consuming. Don't believe everything, question everything. Question everything and question everyone. If it's not in alignment with God, it's not for you. So question things and don't just believe things straight away. 
Uh, fourth one is choose your relationships wisely. Oh my goodness. Every relationships, your friendships. So the people that have immediate influence on you is the most important. Like look at your phone list right now. And the people that you have immediate influence on you are most important. So nurture the right people, grow them, spend quality time, really invest into the right relationships. And then the last but not least, learn about money. <laughs> like really educate yourself about money work fall in love with the journey with the process fall in love with working and you know just learn about money learn about marketing learn about sales and implement all those things sharpen your skills in that because that's really what's going to give you this abundance wow 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 let's that's this has been beautiful beautiful I mean, I know how I found you. Where can people find you and connect also, with you? What I recommend everybody to do right now is to go to Facebook and type in my name. You can see my name here on the screen, Carmen Habibi. Send me a message and I will send you um, my YouTube channel. You can binge watch it for free. I share a lot of content around goals, confidence, leadership, fasting and praying, uh, lifestyle. So you can go watch there for free. I would also love to... No, actually, Aaron doesn't allow me to give my book for free. So if you would like to purchase my book, you're welcome. And when you purchase my book, I would obviously give you the download for free as well. Hey, guys, go connect. Go connect with Kamin. All right, question for you, I think. It is often encouraged to have multiple streams. Okay, question. Mm -hmm. It is often, you know, it's often encouraged to have multiple streams of income. How do you prioritize mm -hmm. which one to begin with? And also, how does a person determine a price for a service they would like to provide? Um, they would like to provide in business, especially if the consumer thinks it's expensive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it really depends on me. I drew out, uh, I was going to bring it, but it's, I had this big board and I just started to draw out eight income streams. So it's, you want to get it from head to paper, okay? Get all your ideas from head to paper before you start prioritizing it. And for me personally, I started very small. So I don't know what your business model is, but for me personally, I started just like, okay, I'm going to write a book. Okay, I'm going to sell that book. From that book came coaching. From that coaching came a membership club, which is a, like a 2,000, 5,000 pounds product. From that came a retreat. That's another 5,000 products per person. From that came, you know, one-to-one -one VIP days. Uh, that's another high-end ticket. So it's like, okay, one thing, but then also there's other investments that, you know, that you can make, like people do trading. You can have affiliations, sponsorship, um, you know, there's so many other investments for me personally. I'm not the, I don't know. I can't give you advice on that because I'm not an expert. I can only give you advice on my experience, what has worked for me. And for me, it's really just working with what I have. Well, I started with a book. Now it's grown into a whole, you know, high end tickets for retreats and events and workshops being booked as an international speaker. So it just started small and now it, it grow. So just get it from head to paper and um beyond that there's other investment opportunities but you need to make sure that you invest into something that you also understand and know <laughs> so don't invest blindly into something always look at the return of investment and if it's something that you enjoy one of the mistakes i think i did in my life which is not a mistake i don't regret anything but it took me a long time to learn i invested into a, a network marketing opportunity for the wrong reasons I just wanted to make money to take that money to reinvest it into my real business. But I didn't have the passion for that network marketing yeah. business. So if you do something half-hearted, you're going to get half-hearted results. Because mm -hmm. I didn't have that passion for it, I failed in both at that time. I failed in my business and the network marketing business. So you want to make sure you invest your time in what is going to fuel you the most as well, because that's going to bring you initially the most income. And that's what I did then. That's the transition that I made and that helped me a lot. I really do wish that people heard what you just said, because I mean, that's the real clincher there. A lot of people go doing things that they don't actually enjoy doing. Um, yeah. Any idea would work, but make sure you're doing something you really love doing. Once again, come in. Um, we appreciate you hanging out with us. Um, you're definitely going to be a regular with the things we're doing uh, from time to time. We really do appreciate you. Um, <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much, and 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 have a good evening. Till we see you again. All right. God thank bless. You so